Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I don't know about you, but it is time to start getting excited as can be. Oh my goodness, guys. We're a little over 24 hours away from kickoff against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we've got a little bit of news here that we must give you guys. Okay, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game now. We talking about practice. You know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny here because I'm beginning to notice, and, and maybe I'm just like, you know, maybe I'm paranoid or something here, but it's kind of funny. You're kind of hearing some of the Mark isms around. You know what I'm saying? It was funny today because, and like I said, maybe I'm just kind of crazy. But I was riding back from working with David Wiley. You know, David Wiley, the chef who says, you know, I'm going to cook the meal. So, you know, I need to get the groceries. So I, I, I chauffeured him around to get the groceries and stuff. And on the way back, I was listening to, um, damn, what's the name of the show? Shit. Marcellus Wiley and crew. Um, and they were talking about the Dallas Cowboys versus Tampa Bay and whether or not, you know, Dak Prescott was going to be okay because now he's fully practicing. And they were going, you know, we talking about practice now. We talking about practice, not the game now. We talking about, I was like, you know, I, I do do that a lot here. I, I do do that take quite a bit here, but I, that's okay. You know, it's cool because I did actually take it from Allen Iverson. Quite frankly, Allen Iverson should probably try and sue me or, or should have trademarked that because, you know, I, I was the first one. At least, you know, at least I was the first one to steal it, not the second one. But anyway, let's talk about practice today for the Dallas Cowboys. Here's what you have. It's the day before the game. Tomorrow night, the Dallas Cowboys will be taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you listen to the talking heads out there, they basically tell us that, you know, this isn't really even a game for Tampa Bay. The, the Dallas Cowboys shouldn't show up. Well, we're still holding out hope for Zach Martin. Zach Martin, uh, right now, it's looking more and more like he will not be there. But that's not to say a miracle doesn't happen. Quite frankly, the Cowboys got a lot of great news today because everybody else who was on the injury list, not the COVID list now, the injury list was a 100% full participation in practice. Okay, now what happens the day before the game is a walkthrough. Okay, it's actually more of a jog through, but it's not a contact practice in the sense of practice. It's basically going through the final motions of each of the plays, what your game plan is and everything else, and making sure everybody is in good shape. And this is the final report that goes out on what happened today. And today... Terrell Basham, full participant. Noah Brown, off the COVID list, although he has not practiced this up for today in basically the last month, was a full participant. Lyle Collins with the next stringer, full participant. Chauncey Goldston, full participant. C.J. Godwin, full participant. Demarcus Lawrence, who says, I'm back, baby. I just don't want to practice. Full. Jake McQuaid, full. Ty Naseki, who had been limited all week. Now, here's the interesting thing on this. Although everybody's listed on there, everybody practiced fully all week with the exception of Noah Brown, who was on the reserve COVID list until today, and Ty Naseki, who was limited on Monday and Tuesday. He was a full participant. And Dak Prescott, little old Dak, little old Dak was a full participant, as well as donovan wilson who's been a full participant all week so going into the game it looks like the only player that we may miss is zach martin this may be the healthiest that this team has been all year or will be all year it's all downhill from here we've heard all the great things of course tom brady who admits that 90 percent of what he says is bullshit tom brady who's been around long enough to know how to play the games with people um, it said some nice things. We know they're bullshit. The Cowboys have said some nice things. We know that's not how they really feel. All that's left is tomorrow we get this thing on. 
Now, this is a little taste of Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin, who has always been on, you know, game day and everything else. Michael Irvin, who's always a great take, who's now on first takes on Mondays. And definitely picking up more more eyes on the show by putting Michael Irvin on there, of course, is doing his thing with our quarterback, Dak Prescott. And so I want to play a little bit on this Dak Prescott segment because, of course, you know, I'm a Dallas Cowboy Dak Prescott fan, and I always like to hear things about my quarterback. So let's, let's listen to this here just a little bit. So I'm what you're here for. How we take the next step. That's all that matters. How we get better today. How are you feeling now? I'm good. I'm healthy, excited, ready to go. So when you said on Hard Knots that you sat enough last year, how hard was that process? Yeah, it was tough. I've never sat or been away from the game for that, that extent of time. And just going through it for the first time and not being able to directly contribute to my team, to the success. It was a place that I, I learned a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. I became a better man, a better person, and I know a better football player because of it. To go through that process just to have another injury in the mm -hmm. shoulder injury, how difficult was that? Yeah, it was difficult. It gives you a different sense of perspective. I learned how important patience was of not getting out there too early, following what the doctor said and what the orders were given. I'd come back out on top of it. Okay, so, so we're good now. We're ready to move on and talk yeah. about the good things. I did the game okay. in that last preseason game, and they were yeah. showing a clip from Hard Knocks. And in that clip, that they had you and Zeke. One, we're gonna protect the football. When you got the ball in your hand, that's the whole team. Two, we're gonna protect the quarterback. And three, we're gonna do everything violently. That's blocking, that's running the ball. Violent. That's everything. Yeah. Yeah, as a quarterback, we're gonna be elite, efficient signal callers that are gonna be consistent in our decision making and our leadership. What was the significance of you guys addressing the team? Yeah, I mean, we've been here. Um, we, know what it, we know what it takes. Uh, we've had some successful years, and we obviously haven't gotten to the Super Bowl and where we expect to go, but we know what it takes to come in each and every day and to, uh, to contribute to this offense and contribute to this team. Bucks win the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, you are the greatest of all time. Even though you would not be going hand-to-hand -to -hand and man-to-man -man against Tom Brady, you are facing Tom Brady, yep. the GOAT. And it's good! It's a great opportunity. Uh, anytime that the opposing quarterback is a great player, it makes me excited. But when you're talking about the, the best to do it right now, I'm excited for, for this matchup and to start the season off after everything I've been through uh, this way. What would it mean for the Dallas Cowboys to open the season and go into Tampa and beat Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? It'd be huge. After last season, after this preseason going winless, it's exactly what we need to start 2021 the right way. Get on the run, get hot, give our fans everything that they're expecting, but more importantly, um, answer our own expectations. You know the last time you threw a pass? October 11, yep. 2020. Yep. I threw a pass today. The last time you threw a pass? <laughs> That's good. The That's last my time quarterback. You threw a pass in a real NFL game, it'll almost be one year. How difficult will it be to pick up where you left off? Yeah, I definitely expect to be better than I was in those la those five games that I played last year. Um, oh, being at those five games would be incredible. Yeah. You just said you expect yourself to be better. It's the work that I've put in. It's everything from the rehab process to my leg, the patience with my arm. When you invest so much into something, uh, you know you'll get that back out of it. And um, I don't have any hesitations in my expectations for myself or for this team. Yeah. And there's no better way to start it off than, than Thursday night opening the league up. I love that, Dak. Some would call it insurmountable task in front of you, and you don't see the size of the mountain. You see the work that you put in the back trunk already. Okay. Good luck this season, my brother. Appreciate you, brother. That's um, an incredible, incredible interview there. Um, definitely hats off to Michael Irvin with the added publicity of being on first take and things. You know, I'm going to ask you guys a question here. Have you ever... Have you ever had a, a person that you really love and you lost or, or something that's, that's been near and dear to you that has been part of your life and have it taken away? Something that is integral to everything that you are. You know, there's the old saying that you don't miss the water until the well runs dry. You know what I mean? 
a lot of things we have, we take for granted that it's always going to be there. And then you lose it. For me, it was actually being able to walk. I took for granted getting up, being able to get around and do everything that I did till I had a flesh-eating bacteria in my knee and had three surgeries to save my life and save my leg and spent six months learning how to walk again. I wasn't walking the same as I was before I had it, but you learn to appreciate just being able to get up and walk around. When something is taken away from you that is near and dear to you and you get the second chance at it, that woman that you love, that great relationship that, that looked like it was gone and you get that second opportunity, you cherish it. You work that much harder. You realize that everything is fragile around you and you have a different perspective of what it is. And see, Dak Prescott has always had football. He was never the guy that anybody looked at and said, he's going to be great. He was always the in-case-shit-happens guy, the backup. And that goes for high school. Got his opportunity. He flew with it. He appreciated it. In college, he got his opportunity. He ran with it. In the pros, He made it look easy sometimes. He got his opportunity and he's run with it. And so it's always been there part of his life. But last year, losing that time, watching his team, and I say his team, Jerry Jones is the owner, but you could tell this is Dak Prescott's team. To lose that and having to fight like hell to try and get that back, it's huge. It's game-changing. It's life-altering. Because now you start looking at things differently. You realize that I can't play this forever. That these opportunities are few and far between. And I have to make the most of it. What can I do every day to make myself better? What can I do to make the people around me better? What can I do to make us all better to achieve everything? It's that relationship. That shit that you did before that messed up the relationship. Hopefully you learn from it and you learn to appreciate the relationship that you had before. And this is where I think Dak Prescott is. As well as a number of the players on this team. So many times we've had guys that are like, I got a star on my helmet. We are the Dallas Cowboys. All we got to do is show up and people going to bow down. That it was all show with no substance. I may be wrong. I hope I'm not. But I truly feel like there is a hunger now with this Dallas Cowboys team. That there's so many guys that realize going through that year that was 2020. From Zeke Elliott, who, my God, last night watching Zeke running around on hard knocks. You know, I know they get the right camera angles and everything like that. But I tell you what, Zeke, different hairdo. Seems hungry. And understanding that same thing of it can all be taken away. Amari Cooper, who, you know, has just gotten back on the field, seems to be that guy who wants to take it to another level. To a Tyron Smith, who's done everything to get back and and to hopefully stay back with the surgeries and things. Seems determined that there's so many guys on here who understand that have had that slice of humble pie, that this shit is not forever. And we got to grab the bull by the horns. I think you might be able to see something that we have not seen from the Dallas Cowboys in a very, very long time. A sense of urgency, a sense of hunger, 
and a sense of passion. We'll find out tomorrow night. As I'm looking at the betting lines on the game day, it's up to eight and a half points against the Dallas Cowboys. And in essence, that should be a blowout if you're looking at Vegas odds. I still believe that my Dallas Cowboys have a good chance in this game. We'll find out tomorrow. I got a lot of work to do between now and then. I'm hoping that you'll join us because we're planning on having a ball here and uh, trying to make this season opener really special. You know how we roll. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Yeah. I will see you guys a little later. Peace out.